everybody happy new year happy new year i think we're live now and we're a bit late but uh sorry we had technical we had a, difficulties well we had a private chat really, we had a right. private chat with john <laughs> yes. now it's public let's just roll right into 2021 shall we everyone this is our good friend john wesley wright from the eastern shore of maryland hi everyone Sorry we're late. <laughs> we had a great we had a great rehearsal. We did. Now we're ready to just jump into it. So John, we go back a ways, don't we? We do. We do go way back, Sarah. Um I we cannot help the fact that we epitomize the fountain of youth. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so uh we can't help that everyone. But uh, even though we, uh, Sarah and Mark and I have known each other for probably over 20 years. That's true. Uh, yeah. I think when, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, we definitely yeah. are. When was the, the, okay. the, the Berkshire Choral Festival? When was that? Was it 1999? I, I 2000. Think so. sure. 2000? Like yeah, something like that. Okay. I was just there a couple years. And... Um, John, you did earn the nickname Johnny Meals Spy because Mark is Meals Eins yes. and you're Spy. So that's that's how close. Yeah, for anybody that wants to know, it's German. We are using German. Eins. <laughs> And this because... is this is this is for our non-German speakers. We should say one and two. But right. at meal and meals comes from miel, which is the French word for honey. This is my brain, John. <laughs> this is the person who made up what's going on in the little cottage brain. So is this, is this your brain? Is this your brain on pandemic? <laughs> uh, no, this has been going on for decades now. <laughs> OK, gotcha. Um, well, anyway, it's great to see you. Yeah. Well, it's a very significant weekend and our thoughts are on the fact that it's uh, celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the fact that we're about to inaugurate a woman, a woman of color to the second highest office. It is just extraordinary and special and wonderful and i'm not gonna let any hatred or fear ruin that for me because it's the country moving forward and so it's just great with your work in educating people about singing in the african-american tradition and spirituals it's just a really poignant to have you here with us now so well Welcome. it's great to be here and uh i i will will come concur that there's a lot to process these days uh, yeah. I the, the fact that we we are we are um, privileged to have uh, uh, Kamala Harris uh, serve as vice president uh, is something that I don't even know that I've had time to to celebrate I, I hear you I mean that's what's so terrible about it it's like we we're not celebrating it because there's a lot of crap in the yeah. way, you yeah. know. Yes. So. Yeah. So we are in our worlds and we are doing what we can to put good positive energy out. And speaking so, of good so positive you energy, this. you made a wonderful recital virtually. Why don't you tell us about that? During the pandemic, you did all that. So give us a little. Right. Yeah. So I think one of the great uh, 
the, one of the great outcomes of the pandemic is, you know, it's forced us to um, step back uh, a bit and uh, to, uh, you know, consider the good things around us and uh, our family and our friends. And it's those of us in the uh, art field have had to figure out ways to be innovative and uh, you're doing that right now. You, you're exemplifying that right now with your fireside chat. So kudos to you. And uh, so, yeah, so I've done a lot more standing in front of my iPhone and, <laughs> uh, and taping uh, parts uh, and, and various songs than I ever imagined that I would. And uh, so this virtual concert, uh, this with my wonderful colleague and friend, Danielle Cumming, who's uh, classical guitarist, uh, classical guitarist uh, from uh, Toronto. Uh, we've, we've worked together for about 10 years here at Salisbury University. And we just actually settled after 10 years on a name for our duo. So we probably realized at some point last year that, hey, you're from, you're from Canada and I'm from Georgia. And we sing a lot of spirituals on our concerts. So why don't we call ourselves North meets South? And Perfect. it's, it's, it's stuck and it seems relevant. And, um, so yeah, I'm very happy to, hey. to share with you, uh, some things from that concert, uh, that we made, uh, for Bayview, uh, the Bayview music festival up in Petoskey, Michigan, which is a wonderful Chautauqua institution. Awesome. Just, just, just to, I want to do a little shout out for Georgia. Go yeah. <laughs> Yay, Georgia. That's pretty uh, awesome, right? <laughs> Another yeah. thing that we're not really celebrating because of all the noise. So yes, let's yeah. celebrate it right now. And all, noise. all the women of color and who work so hard to make it happen too. Yeah. And all the, you know, Stacey Abrams. All on down. It's great. I just want to mention you're really taking the fireside chat thing serious, aren't you? I mean, you know, I I am going to admit that uh, I I did take it take it seriously. We don't mess around here on the Eastern Shore. You said fireside chat, so I, I found some fire and we're chatting. <laughs> And, it, and it is between, and it also it is is between five and six o'clock, which is the cocktail hour so cheers cheers, cheers on that. <laughs> so, so let's listen to um this uh duet that is a part of this virtual concert okay. and you're joined by who so i am joined by a, a wonderful uh, student who just graduated from salisbury university and his name is jeremiah copeland uh, Jeremiah is a very special kid. He's, I've known him since he was 11. Uh, and uh, uh, David Ronis is probably watching right now. He's a wonderful opera director at University of Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, David and I co-directed the musical theater uh, camp together for many years. And that's where we met Jeremiah. So here he is. Great. The National Mark and I, we performed there. Yes, and which you was really great. You are, yeah. Yes, you are a couple guest. of times. A couple of times, yeah. Yep. So, so Jeremiah, yeah. Is, yeah. Jeremiah is the national reigning national Nats musical theater champion. So, so he's a super. fantastic kid. All yeah. right. Lord, I couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Oh, way down yonder by myself. And I couldn't hear nobody pray. Lord, I couldn't hear nobody pray. I couldn't hear 
so perfect with that genre yeah it, it's it's a little bit um uh, danielle and i talk about this all the time it's a little bit like a a duh moment because uh, i don't think that uh african-american spirituals are a thing in in the classical mu uh, the mm, guitar art, right uh in fact i i'm not even sure that you know pairing singers with with classical guitar music is is all of all that uh you know all that it's sort of like being you know you're in a, you're a solo vo voice solo opera singer you're a cl classical guitar is classical guitar right. so it's, it's the pure purity about it mm -hmm. and so we we've had a lot of fun introducing that genre to to the field yeah it's incredible and the warmth of the sound and you know it just complements it so beautifully right. so john I mean, yeah um you introduced me to uh the maryland spiritual initiative is that right <clears throat> that's an organization that is raising awareness of the history african-american history in your area is that right yes absolutely so uh, I'll try to make this uh, as short as I can, but um, <laughs> you know, we all, you, you all are in the same, same uh, boat when, in our, we, we meet some extraordinary people in our field. And I've had the great pr privilege of knowing a, a lady that I consider to be Eastern Shore royalty. Her name is Barbara Paka. And um, her, Family has a long uh, history here. Uh, there's a William Paca house in Annapolis, a uh, museum and gardens. And I believe one of the signatories on the, uh, is it the Declaration of Independence? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, a go and was a governor uh, of Maryland. Oh, so, wow. so there's a long history there. And so Barbara uh, is a champion of African-American history and culture. And she is the curator of an artist from the 30s and 40, 40s by the name of Ruth Starr Rose. Mm. And, and Ruth Starr Rose was um, 
a privileged lady. She was very aware of her privilege, but lived in a small town on here on the Eastern shore that was like no other. It was, it was a bit of an, a, a very integrated, the, they went to church together, blacks and whites went to church together. They played together. They uh, were fishermen boated, boated together. It was, it was not uh, the norm. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in this, uh, uh, in this situation, Miss uh, Ruth Star Rose, she depicted uh, through her art. She depicted uh, the spirituals that she heard in church and mm-hmm. the, the the life uh, around her. And so they're uh, wonderful paintings. Uh, and you, so the piece that I think you're referring to is uh, is Brown Baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brown Baby. So she took she took to this uh, to the song and she has added some of Ruth Star Rose's uh, paintings to, to the song. That's great. All right, let's let's play it, Mark. Brown baby, brown baby, as you grow up. I want you to drink from the plenty cup. I want you to stand up tall and proud. I want you to speak up clear and I've never had When out of men's hearts All the hate is heard You're gonna live In a better so moving it really is and uh, you were showing us the book that you have can you show everyone that photo the painting of the whale of the woman in the whale yeah so it's uh it's not a woman it's not a woman in the whale a woman (laughs) in the whale (laughs) uh where where, did you not go to sunday school okay so this is (laughs) 
This is Jonah. Oh, Jonah and the whale. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is uh, this beautiful uh, book about Ruth Star Rose's work. And this is Barbara's. Barbara she curated, Fates. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is her. This is her treasure, one of her babies, and uh, so this is just one of the really famous paintings oh, here. Yeah. But you can see, um, as you can see, it wasn't just the spirituals like that one is about Jonah, but she she depicted just people. You know, she and there's a beautiful gentleman here on the back. Mm. You know, uh -huh. so. Uh, it, it was, it was, it's really kind of an, it's an extraordinary thing. And I got to know Barbara, she, she came to know my work with the American Spiritual Ensemble okay. uh, in 2016. And uh, it just so happened that w the Spiritual Ensemble was in residence at Salisbury at the same time that the, the Ruth Star Rose exhibit was coming through. And so we did this beautiful, uh, huh star aligning event uh where where we talked about the the art uh as as the american spiritual ensemble you know did their did their thing that's awesome that's kind of your style john that's why my other nickname for you is dream weaver you know that is actually my favorite and may, probably my only nickname i, I <laughs> besides but, johnny mule's spy that is true. That is true. I have you. You are the nickname giver. I, I got that from my dad. I don't know. At somebody either meals, Cotty. It's just it's weird. I'm, I'm cursed with that. But no, you are blessed with that for sure. <laughs> Thanks, John. So speaking of uh, one thing, I think it's really cool, and I learned this from you is the difference between gospel and spirituals. Can you explain that to everyone? So, so actually, I, I will, will explain that, but when we just talk about song traditions in general, in African-American song traditions, we're talking a whole you know, sl slew of different things. I think the two big biggies are spiritual and gospel, and that's why we, that's why we 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 talk talk about that so much because, uh, you know, those are, those are the genres that we know and that we deal with, and over time, uh, you know, my my theory is that the, the word gospel is just like really catchy. I mean, and and, and so people interchange them. And, and I mean, it's what, what's a better word? I mean, the, the yeah. gospel truth, we use the word gospel in so many ways, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So when we're talking about the difference between the two, uh, you could think of it this way. So, so when you think about spirituals, you're thinking about folk melodies, acapella tied to the South coming out of the slave fields. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you think about gospel, you're talking about, you know, uh, much later, more tied to the North, urban, and uh, related more to blues and jazz. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's a time difference. Uh, there's a geographic difference. Uh, there are gospel music is, has, we know who the composers are. They <laughs> They uh, they want their their paychecks. They uh, they want their royalties. Uh, we we you know there are drums and instruments and various various things that, that we associate with with gospel. Mm -hmm. Isn't it also biblical? I mean, the gospel being related to the New Testament, and are the spirituals related a lot to the Old Testament, or is that not? Yeah. Yeah, so you can you can also put make that make that distinction too. It's not it doesn't isn't always the case, but I would say more so. Mm -hmm. I, I think where you can uh, make a, a another distinction with gospel music, if you start to you start to to speak more in the uh, in the first person, so mm -hmm. it's more about more about uh, your your direct relationship 
with your with your savior, mm -hmm. uh, your personal relationship as, uh, so for example, uh, precious Lord, take my hand, mm -hmm. lead me on, you know, a gospel hymn. So, uh, and you know, then the spirituals would, you know, ha maybe be talking more, more about, uh, an old Testament, uh, Noah or Moses or, uh, Oh, third German. person, kind of more. <laughs> right. <clears throat> hmm, that's cool. Right, more narrative. Yeah. Wow. Mark, do you have any questions for John about his education, educating us in the African American? No, I'm, I'm very interested in this uh, difference between spiritual and uh, gospel. And in, in a way, gospel is a more modern. It's spiritual and more kind of a a root bulk yeah. almost kind of a, yeah you know. and and you know we've got you know you've got all all kinds of, of branches of of gospel you know you've got you, you know you've got uh contemporary gospel you've got you know what uh, a genre that i love so much is the is the gospel quartet mm -hmm. and uh you know the 50s and 60s where there were you know quartets everywhere and uh and you've got you know hip people singing a hip-hop style yeah now yeah sure gospel. i mean hip-hop has involved has gobbled about everything right exactly. everything is in hip-hop at this yeah. point yeah and so and so you you'll also hear you you'll you're, you'll also hear spirituals sung in a gospel style uh -huh. okay? okay so so that's uh the great the great melding <laughs> may we all meld <laughs> yes and stop this division so john i know you give these amazing workshops and lecture demonstrations which i've witnessed physically i've been there when you've done that and i've been a participant and i've been a you know uh, colleague and it's just fascinating that you do this and that you're dedicated to educate people about this genre now how do you deal when you don't have when you have I mean or when you have mm -hmm. white people <laughs> singing these spirituals is it a problem? <laughs> well, you're, you're going you're going right in <laughs> for the. Uh, we got to talk in, about it. Regular. Sorry, it, took, it was really hard to get that out because it's such a topic that we probably need to talk about, but we're all kind of afraid to talk about because we don't know what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. People misunderstand certain things or take things out of context. Right. Some people are ignorant and say stupid things or do stupid things. So right. yeah, it's discussion we need to keep having. Right. So uh, first, I'm going to take a sip of wine before I answer <laughs> you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a good idea. It's a very, very, uh, very complicated subject. All right. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked. Uh, you. I'm glad you went down this road yeah. because. The, the, so the, first, the thing that I'll say absolutely is that uh, the music that we experience uh, today is American music. It is part of American history and it, is, it, is, it belongs to everyone. If you took out, um, <laughs> if you tried to take out, you know, spirituals, from uh, school colleges and universities and high schools uh, across, you know, around the globe. Mm -hmm. If you tried to take away jazz programs, <laughs> if you tried to take away anything that, like, you know, was uh, evolved from from the fields or evolved from black folks improvising, or if you tried to take that away, it, it you would be left with practically nothing. That's right. Um, so, couldn't agree um, with you more. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
that's my that's my short answer is I think that I think when you're when you start to when you start to get into whether uh, you know white people should sing this or sing that or you know I just want I I I'd like to say it doesn't matter whether you're black or white I want it done well mm -hmm. I want it done with with tastefully Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's no different than if, if you know when I go on the stage and I sing Schubert, uh, I'm really trying my darndest, you know, to to not, you know, embarrass the German culture, and German <laughs> culture embarrass the Ger the German language. So right. I worked very hard uh, on, on that, and so uh, it's the same thing for so stylistically we have to 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 work. Uh, to to be appropriate and be um, stylistically um, do do some have have integrity with the style. Well, having integrity, I I agree with you completely. But we do run into some problems when a what, certain what could words. You be talking about hmm? whatever could you be talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like I I totally get it. You know, one. Some of us were owners and some of us were slaves. I mean, that is something you cannot ignore and walk away from. And so for me to sing something that sounds like a black person singing it, I, I think it's wrong. I think it's inappropriate. So I don't do that. Um, but on the other hand, how, how can we, I mean, hopefully somehow we'll figure out a way to just respect each other, have tolerance towards each other, and be able to sing together without any malice or hatred yeah. or fear. Well, I mean, you were talking about jazz a, a little bit earlier. I mean, that's what I know more than spiritual, but I know the spiritual are in there. They're in that idiom. And I know the harmony, the, the certain things come from western civilization it's been it's been a mix right there absolutely and then so, even so, then even then uh you know there's some purists in there there's the people that say jazz stopped at 1930 after that it's bebop it's already uh you know hijacking something and putting it somewhere else and even then in in when when you go to the later in the 20th century in the 20th century when you have Miles Davis taking rock element and mixing in all of it. So all these things become not pure anymore, but what does it mean? It's that purity, it's, it's evolving the music. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, so I, I, I will share with you that um, just, uh, just this, this past year, last March, I experienced something that I never in my wildest imagination uh, thought that I would experience. Um, so I was in, I was an artist in residence in, at Western Michigan University, had an incredible week of events and experiences with teachers and students. And the culminating concert was, um, was all the work that we had done during the week. And we had, I had, uh, you know, taught different folks, uh, solo spirituals, um, you know, coached the solo spirituals. We did ring shouts, work songs, uh, all kinds of things. And we, we did some things, participatory things with the audience. And it was a very, very special time. And uh, at the, uh, at the day after every, everyone's, you know, feeling great and it, it's, ended on such a high. I mean, one of the high notes of actually my entire career. And the next day I get a phone call and apparently a young lady came, uh, I'm going to say with, with a bit of an agenda and she filmed uh, only uh, for about 20 seconds of only white people doing a certain uh, song, a ring shout it was that we that we were what we had worked on during the week. And she posted it and said, look at look at you know what these white people are doing. This is appropriation and you know this is horrible. This is our music and 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 they, you know, uh they don't have a right to do that. And 
uh, att attacked me, of course, which I, you know, I, I don't need to talk about. But what I what I want to say, so all all of that, you know, that was a that was an experience for me, and and the things that I, I'm still learning from it. But I I just want to say that we just what you were saying, Mark just the fact that we stand on a stage and present things is a European concept. Mm. So it, yeah. it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is too, too, too late mm -hmm. to try to say that something uh, that has weaved itself so deeply into, into our American culture that that it, it isn't does uh, that somebody doesn't have a right to to perform it yeah and, and i mean the notion the notion like of owning or stealing which is completely it it, it makes no sense in for an art form or a culture you cannot steal a culture you can kill a culture and that the worst thing you can do is like you know make all those people sing uh you know plain chant or something no more spiritual you're forbidden to sing spiritual you know it's your for your culture you're just gonna sing madrigal and or rock song i don't know but it's already anyway but that's not what what you're doing what you're doing you're making the culture live so that that that's a wrong that, that's a wrong optic of thinking because you make this culture live that you're actually taking it. You're not taking it, you make it live. Yeah. And it's, it's better for the culture itself. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I, that's what I thought all these years <laughs> I was doing. Well, I also, I also think there are people, and rightfully so, are angry, are reactioning, yes. are reacting yeah. to, are reactionary to something that, you know, they feel is, taken from them because of what people of color have endured in this country for 400 years. Uh, so yes, I get that. It's just unfortunate that we can't, that it can't be an opportunity to educate and has to be seen as cultural appropriation. And we hope, I mean, and that's why I started this discussion because it leads into the last video that oh. we want to show everyone, which okay. is from a project you did for um, a school in Iowa. Uh, correct? Okay, yes. And, so, oh yes. yeah, go ahead. Tell us about the project. Yeah, so, so this goes back to your uh, question about, uh, you know, what we've, what we've been doing during the pandemic. We, you know, artists figuring out how to create things. And uh, I had a friend from the Berkshire Choral Festival also, uh, Becky Fields, if you're out there, Becky Fields Moffitt now, she's a mom. Oh, nice. And uh, so she contacted me. She's, she's just, just, you know, a, a star music educator out she in is. Iowa I City. She is. I remember that. And uh, she said, hey, you know, I, I, it's not ideal, but would you consider doing one of your workshops virtually and also, you know, creating some, some videos for, for our kids? And, and so she had, had this entire district of fifth and sixth graders are, are taking on the topic of freedom songs. And, um, and so I, I said, absolutely, I'll give it a try. And so on the actual day, January 6th, on, I, I'm getting kind of choked up here, uh, on the actual day at the actual time that folks were storming and breaching the Capitol, I was giving a workshop on freedom songs to a, um, a group of Iowa teachers. So, um, Oh, it's pretty just, just unbelievable. Pretty horrible. Unbelievable. The, the the relevance and the it, the contrast. We, we have a lot. We have, we have a lot to overcome. Yeah. Yes, we do. And I'm so grateful to you for sharing 
that YouTube video by uh, Jeannie Dees, who is a yeah. YouTube star. And we're going to post that with the chat because everyone should watch this. And it's about the history of the song, We Shall Overcome. Yes, and thank it's... you, Jeannie Dees. I'm sorry? I said, thank you, Jeannie Dees. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Jeannie Dees. You are amazing. I mean, I started watching his other videos, too. He's just so interesting and just teaching people, you know, it's like, that's what it's all about. So just in a nutshell, we shall overcome it. It borrows from a lot of musical genres going back to the 18th century. Yeah. Right. So absolutely. And, and I'm, you know, among some of its roots, uh, uh, is a, a composer that is we have here from the, the east right here on the eastern shore and his name is Charles Albert Tindley and uh, Charles Albert Tindley wrote a hymn there were many hymns but one called I'll Overcome Someday and uh, so that's that's one of the one of the roots uh, to to We Shall Overcome there's an there's also an, a, a gospel song that it used to you know be titled uh, uh, no more auction block I would yeah no no more auction block is a spirit is an, a, a spiritual has ties to uh, they say to a Catholic song O Sanctissima mm -hmm. so so it's really worth watching watching that video yeah. Uh, this is a year. I think you're going to play an arrangement that, you know, we came up with a trio of mine with Jeremiah and a young lady named Annabelle. I also want to say how special it is to be, have done, you know, be doing this work uh, here on the Eastern shore where uh, both Harriet Tubman yeah. and, and Frederick Douglass were at, born and great, right? yeah. and, and Yeah. That is just, what an amazing place and it's going strong. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is so moving. I, I've watched it probably 10 times. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna play it now. And here is we shall overcome. Okay.
shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall. just like yeah. my favorite arrangement ever of that song it's oh, just thank you i mean it's so beautiful i get i get weepy well thank you there's more there's more to come just so that if for anybody who's who's watching i uh, always try to draw students into my these experiences and uh so i like everyone else was you know completely shaken to the core by the events uh the chaos uh, everything going on and so i immediately thought you know how how can i what can i do how can i can con contribute so i've um you know produced a program that of of songs of courage freedom and justice and we are uh, filming in in a couple of weeks, so That's that great. that piece will get officially officially uh, filmed along with many other things. Awesome! Is that with in conjunction with your students? Yes, with with Jay, with Annabelle. Oh yeah, they're awesome. And then we're going to add in uh, add in a, a a wonderful bass, so we'll have a quartet. That sounds super! I can't wait to see that. John, John, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for answering the hard questions. <laughs> and may we all continue this discussion together. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. That's right. And, 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 yeah. and look for the next chat in a couple of weeks. Next chat coming in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, Let's welcome that new administration in and uh, let's just hold our breath for the next three days. <laughs> <laughs>